Hey, this is Notzer, and we're going to be talking about the I Am Commander event. But first, I just want to make you aware of a ship in need of saving, the USS Orlick, a gearing class destroyer. It is one of five gearing class that are still afloat, and if it wants to remain afloat, it needs extensive repairs, it needs to be restored, and possibly even relocated. The link is in the video description. It's orlick.org, and... Any and all donations are appreciated. Similar to the USS Texas, obviously there's a lot of historical ships around the world that need to be protected because we don't want some of our beautiful history to be sold for scrap. There's a lot of ships that deserve to still be around. So if you're interested in supporting them, go check that out. And I've been playing a lot of the gearing, so this is kind of a soft spot for me. It really is important that we save history. There's way too much of it that's allowed to rot away, and I am I am always in favor of supporting it any way that possible. So, let's talk about the I Am Commander. This is an event involving CCs, up to 10, who will be participating for honor and glory, and eventually there'll be gladiatorial arena-style combat at the end in St. Petersburg. Wargaming will, of course, be officiating, and hopefully there'll be visual record for all of us to enjoy. Now let's move on to the I Am Commander event that's going to involve 10 CCs over the course of a couple, six, seven weeks. I have no idea. They'll have to complete tasks publicly, and you're supposed to enjoy it, vote on stuff, and see where that goes. And eventually it'll end up with a commander in-game. Wargaming, the links in the video description, is allowing us to vote for two, the community. So if you follow that link, it's a survey link, it'll take you over to the ring public vote, which should last for another day, and you've got about 20 contestants that have posted YouTube videos, you know, saying why you should vote for them. You can watch those, or you can just vote on your own. I don't really care. Do whatever you want. The point is, it's there. So hopefully, if you have any interest in this at all, or if you have someone who you like a lot, vote for them. Just saying. Hopefully it's enjoyable. I'm definitely looking forward to taking part in the tasks themselves if they make them public. I'm sure whoever gets in, I can totally like get information on what the task is as long as I don't make it public until the date that it should be, if that's the case. I don't think it will be, but yeah. So that'll be cool. I have already voted and uh, yeah. I believe the other eight slots are decided on by Wargaming, and maybe the CCs, I don't really know, but it should be cool. Now, the game in the background is me in the Seattle, and uh, I've heard that this ship sucks to play. There's a little bit of bonus feature. Obviously, if you don't want to hear about my tips and tricks to improving with the Seattle and making it work, you know, it's cool. But this is one of those ships that has definitely been an issue. And I have had my fair share of issues alongside with that. One of the issues is it requires basically a full broadside. And the turrets don't traverse nearly quick enough that you can compensate for being perfectly broadside. So you have to make a decision. Do I want to do damage or do I want to take damage? You can't really tow that line quite as easily as you would with the Wooster or something like that. The Wooster is absolutely capable of playing with the throttle, playing with the rudder, and avoiding shells that would otherwise damage it. The Seattle has to be a little bit more stagnant, stationary, because of the turret traverse. So, for me, I invest in the turret traverse to try and take a little bit of that edge off, because it's just ridiculous. For a light cruiser, for a tier 9, you're competing against other light cruisers that have a turret traverse of 8 seconds, 10 seconds. With Expert Marksman, I've got 21 second turret traverse. Yeah. Another thing, I get acceleration. I feel like acceleration is a really big asset in a stationary playstyle. You could even argue that it's a big asset in an open water because you can always change your speed and it doesn't take effect fully. But as you get closer to absolute zero, you benefit more from it until if you're playing with a throttle plus or minus a fourth, it's actually very successful in 
using islands to block line of sight, and this is a necessary skill. It's, for some, a necessary evil because it's a pretty stationary playstyle. If you've watched one, Des Moines, you've watched them all. Same with the Light Cruiser, the Seattle, Worcester. They love Cleveland. They love this stationary style. And they're just trying to rain shells over, right? Get the fire chance. Let it sit and burn on a battleship. Use the Light Cruiser. Quickly kill off the DDs. You get the idea. I use the A-hole. I use the range mod. I feel like getting range is the only thing that protects you in the really clutch situations. Plus, you know what? You, you might say, well, you're by an island. What do I expect? There's a lot of battleships that approach and walk away from islands. And light cruisers are beastly against battleships. They light fires like it's going out of style. It is always there and it never fails and it's very easy to play with that island have your shells land on target and on top of all of that invest as quickly as possible in inertia fuse high explosive it is by far the most important thing you can do you need to invest in it if you're going up against tier 9s and tier 10s there is a ton a ton of 27 millimeter 32 millimeter armor that you're going to be presented with and if you don't have an extra fuse high explosive it will shatter it will fail to penetrate it will do zero damage with your he and you don't want to do that you're going to be spamming a lot of he to me the light cruiser of the americans probably 60 or 70 30 maybe even 80 20 it all depends on how easy your targets are some targets are just more oblivious than others they'll show a perfect broadside well if it's a battleship yeah a perfect broadside if you can shove it into the superstructure you're going to be doing some pretty consistent damage also the broadside of the bound stern with ap you do tons of damage but generally from medium to long range over islands you're looking for fires you're looking to finish off targets you're looking to take advantage of the the rate of fire you're going to miss shots, but you should keep up the fire and always try and look to get a more accurate aim on the target. And once you've done that, Seattle's going to work just like every other. It's going to be a little bit open to damage, for sure. You don't want to rely 100% on stationary. You, in fact, want to avoid being perfectly stationary for longer than a couple seconds. It all depends on... Who is in front of you? Is it someone with a scout aircraft? Is it a battleship that could potentially reach you from a angle that you haven't considered? Just keep that on in your mind and you should do well. A-hole, range mod. I like expert marksman because it is a little frustrating and 100% inertia fuse high explosive as soon as possible. Don't take it over concealment but it should be absolutely the next skill you take, in my opinion. And I think you'll do all right. I think the Seattle is, it's awkward because of the turret traverse, the range mod, not having an extra fuse high explosive most likely. But once you get on that, you can do just as much damage as any other light cruiser. And I hope all of this was helpful information. Once again, orlick.org for the USS Orlick, the gearing class destroyer. The survey link in the video description if you want to participate in the I Am Commander campaign. You only have this day to put lock in your vote, and then it's gonna move on to the next phase. And then finally, good luck in the Seattle. If you're looking for a good game in Seattle, hopefully this was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.